I've got a good episode for you today. I have a couple announcements, but first I'm going to get right into it. One of you left me a comment, I think it was last week, and it was on the announcement that Paul and I got married, and we were talking about over 70 getting married. Is it is it plausible? Is it a good thing? Well, one of you said, there's hope for me. Thank you. Well, I took that to mean that you would like to find somebody to become attached to and to marry or live with or have a really intimate relationship with, but possibly you haven't found one or you feel like you're too old to do it. So you said, there's hope for me. Well, I do want to, um, I want to talk about that. Uh, most of you have said, that you would not be interested either you're still married or your husband recently passed away or your wife passed away or you are in no way interested in having a relationship with anybody um, anymore well i don't know if you have uh, been following me for a long time but i did do a video called 25 years alone and i spent 25 years alone without even dating. So I know that it's possible. And I remember for years, well, for 25 years saying that like, oh, I would never remarry my kids. So we'd always ask me, mom, do you think you'll find somebody new? Or do you think you'll ever get married again or ever um, date again? And I said, I really doubt it. I think I'm over this part of my life and I'm just enjoying being alone and just being a solo female. And I was a solo female for the first four years as a nomad. I just traveled myself and I, I gained a lot of friends. Well, here I am. <laughs> and so there's hope. There is hope. If you're interested, there will be somebody put in your way probably. But I'm going to talk about the different, there's other factors involved in finding a, a mate finding somebody to be intimate with, a one-on-one, -on -one, just that special someone. And uh, I just want to do a shout out to Max. Max has a lot of female friends. Um, he's somebody that a lot of females gravitate to. He makes a wonderful friend. But I do know that Max would eventually find, I think he will find that special someone that just, it's him and her. And, uh, and I can't wait till he does. I hope he does. Well, it's not like I hope. I know he will. I know he will. Well, <laughs> so there are people out here as nomads and people living in sticks and bricks that would like to find that special someone. So here's what I know so far. Here is what Joe Dispenza has um, said in some of his videos, you need to write down exactly the kind of person you want to bond with, that you want to be that special someone in your life. Write all of the characteristics down and don't, don't, um, don't just be general, be specific. What are you looking for in a mate? And I want you to make a list of everything that you want. What are those qualities? Well, what you need to do next is after you look at it, really study that list and then go be that person. Go be, have all of those qualities because we are energy. We are 99.999% energy. That's science. Every We're made up of atoms and every atom is made up of, there's it's an atom, it's a little nucleus in the middle. That's matter. That nucleus is 0.001%. The rest of the model of the atom, the new model of an atom, and then around that is energy. It's just energy and it 
go around it. We are energy. And so who we are is what we attract to us. If we are evil, we attract evil to us. If we are um, very gracious and we have gratitude in our heart, we will attract that to us. Who we are and what we are is what we attract. We, uh, we attract like-minded things. So you need to make that list and study it and begin being it. Now, some of you, in fact, somebody just recently said on one of the comments, nobody changes. Oh, contraire. We change all the time. You know, here's some, here's a fun fact. Every seven years, our DNA doesn't change, but every seven years, we are constantly, and within seven years, we're renewing our organs, our, our hair, everything. We're renewing our skin. Yes. Well, so in seven years, you're really almost a different person. <laughs> That's pretty weird. Um, I do know that the heart, the heart is one thing that once the heart is scarred, it remains scarred. Like your liver can constantly renew itself. The heart is different. So I don't know that seven year thing, but I do know that we can Im improve on it. But if there's a real scarring going on in your heart that I believe I've read, you know, there's, there's always new science going on. Maybe that's changed over the past couple of years, but they do say, and I've read that scarring remains on your heart. So, but we can improve everything. We are constantly improving ourselves and we can renew our mind and we can renew our personality. Our personalities change all the time. They really do. I do know because we can renew those synapses in our brain, all the, all the wiring in there, we can improve on that or we can uh, make it go worse by, you know, drinking a lot and drinking does kill our brain, brain cells and it destroys the connection. So now they're saying, remember they said, um, oh, a glass of wine a day is really good for you. Uh, you know, that's been changed a long time ago, but people still think that that's a good thing. That's a bad thing. You know, it's so bad for your liver and your organs, not just your liver, but your organs and then definitely your mind. So no, <laughs> we don't always, oh, there's a fly in here. We don't always stay the same. We change all the time. We can improve on our personality all the time. I mean, yes, we can improve ourselves. So go ahead and get that list going. If this is something that really is in your heart that you want to uh, find somebody. Well, there are other factors involved in the whole process so and i'm going to tell you about a book and let me read the title because it's one of the longest titles of a book that i've read in a long time it's called attached i listened to the audiobook a few years ago i first bought it i was a member of audible.com which is an affiliate of amazon and it's really i think it's kind of expensive so i kind of quit um, doing that, but I have quite a few audiobooks. Well, I like to listen to an audiobook for just a little while before I put it on the timer for like maybe 30 to 45 minutes and then it goes off. And I fall asleep to uh, audiobooks. Well, I thought, oh, you know, I would like to uh, reread this or re listen to it. It's called Attached The New Science of Adult Attachment and How It Can Help You find and keep love. The authors are Amir Levine and Rachel Heller. So if you want to find that book, I'm sure it's it's an actual paperback or hardcover, but it's also an audio book. Okay. Well, I've been listening to it off and on. And what I do is I actually, because I fell asleep, so I kind of scoot it back just a little bit the next night. Well, an attachment theory is there are three styles. Everybody has an attachment style. There are three main ones. I did see a website where that said there were four, so, but no, 
let's just go with the three. One is the secure attachment style. The second one is the anxious attachment style, really the insecure style. And then the third one is avoidant style. So there is a people who are very secure and when they're attached to somebody, whether it be a, a friend, your children, uh, but mainly let's, let's go with the love aspect that you're very secure in it. The second one is you're very insecure. You're anxious. You're always looking and trying to read your partner's body language and the words that they say. They're like, well, what does he mean by that inside your mind? Maybe he really doesn't love me. You know, you know that type of person or, and, and actually, let me just say this, according to the book, there's a whole bunch of us who are anxious. <laughs> we have anxious attachment styles and I'll tell you in a minute why. And then you've got the avoidance style. People, there's a train going by. There's a lot of ambient noise. I've got my two uh, uh, front windows open. It's not as hot, but it's still, yeah. And my, let me just side note, um, the one fan broke and then I pulled the other one that I had given Paul and cause I had an extra and I used that one and now that one's broke. Something is, I, I think what's happening is things are not, things are not lasting as long as they used to in days gone by. What's happening with me is the, um, the, the part of the USB that goes into my power station. There's a little bit of faulty wire going on and that was an older fan. So I'm without a fan right now. I've got one coming from Amazon at my, um, Amazon hub. So I can pick that up either tonight or tomorrow, but okay. Attach attachment styles, the avoidant person avoid they they do have relationships it's still a style they're attached to people but it's a it's a an avoid they avoid that person um well, let me explain because it might sound kind of um counterintuitive right if they avoid then they wouldn't be in a relationship but they do they still date they still have relationships but they have an avoiding style they're the kind of people that remember that, that new word going on, they ghost you. They just disappear for a long time or forever. They, uh, they will avoid an attachment. They'll attach to you. I'm sure they're, they're finding, um, people to uh, connect with, um, possibly for sex, for conversation, maybe to take out to dinner, but eventually they avoid you. And even if you are in a relationship or you even do get married, I imagine a lot of these people back then, if you remember the day, we know that if, if a girl got pregnant, they got married. Well, they may have an avoiding style. So they would be the ones who don't come home very often. They don't talk hardly at all. The, so if they had to, had to get married, this is the kind of marriage they would probably have. So those are the three styles. Now, the one thing about, so in, in the book, they give a quiz right there. They'll say, um, they'll do a, a, a quiz for each style to see if you're how, where you're at. So please get the book if this is interesting. It really is fascinating. So a lot, I'm just, what I'm mentioning is these are going to be factors in finding somebody, right? Because in the title, it does sell, say how it can help you find and keep love. So if you're, if you find somebody who is in a secure, uh, style relationship, but you might be an anxious style, um, it's, it's a good, and it's, it's very plausible that this would happen because there are so many anxious people out there. And if you do have a certain style, also in the book, it does mention you can change your style. Over time, you can help develop a secure style. And that even goes for avoidance. So, but out there in the dating world, who are you going to find the most of? 
if you're anxious and you want to find somebody, who are you going to find more of? The avoidance. Because they aren't in a relationship a long term. Because they're avoiding. So you're going to keep coming across these people who really have an avoiding um, attachment style. The secure, they're usually married. They're usually in long-term relationships because they're secure. And they can help help their, if their partner is um, more anxious or insecure, they can actually help them become a more secure um, style in the relationship. So in the book, they talk about the research that have been done with children. And they'll go in a room and they have their parent. Their first attachment is with their parent. So this is where their style really is going to get formed from the very beginning. So they'll have that child and she'll be exploring and she'll be playing. And just off in the corner, the parent will leave. They'll have the parent leave and the child will look around and they'll see that the parent isn't there. They're dependent on that parent. That's who they're attached to. Now, when that parent was there, they could explore and play in comfort. They felt secure. That was their security. But when they see that parent isn't there anymore, their creativity stops. They become um, anxious and they, they can't concentrate on what they're doing. So they're really not developing that's whatever they're playing with and they're learning with their toys or their, their activity. Well, it's the same for adults. So many, they say in the book that a lot of people say, oh, I, do, I never depend on anybody. And a lot of parents, older, older style parents, maybe like our grandparents, oh, taught this to you, never depend on somebody. Depend on yourself. You're the only one you can depend on. You know, dependency should not be a dirty word. That child could grow and learn and develop in, and be more creative knowing that there was somebody that they could depend on. It's the same as adults. If it's not a horrible thing to become attached to somebody, as they say in the book, two heads are better than one. And in previous times, that was survival. You had to have other people around for survival. And it's sort of we, we might not at this moment, in the future we could, but at this moment we don't have to have that, but, well, some do, but talking about survival, even of the mind of relaxing and learning new skills and becoming more creative to develop ourselves. When we know that we have somebody to depend on. So I was thinking about Paul and I during this whole time. I mean, yes, I am much more creative when I am near Paul. Even before we got married, we were just um, parking partners. We were traveling partners for a couple of years. And I, I always felt more relaxed. Yeah. And that goes like, and I thought about Max when I was listening to this too. Well, a lot of women like to park with Max. I think, and they've even expressed to him, they feel more secure when they park with Max. So there's, a, they're not in a romantic relationship. Although I would like to see Max find somebody that would want to be, that's a good match, that would want to not just, feel secure traveling with them, but actually become a, a partner with Max. Yeah. So I know, listen to me, little matchmaker, you know, but that's when we can really grow. If we're just a, totally alone, we always have to think about other things like, oh, survival, who's around me? But when there's two or more together, does that make sense? So that's what this book is about. Let me see, make sure that I got all that I wanted to talk about. I do. So I do recommend this book. It's called Attached and it's, I'll, I'll put it up here on the screen. Okay, so how is Lee and Paul's marriage going? It's different. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's different. It's not your typical traditional uh, marriage. I'm in my van 
a lot of the time and he's in his van a lot of the time. When we do get together, it's usually when we go out to lunch, whether it's a senior center or a, um, a, a restaurant, or we go, have, we just go have coffee and we sit and we chat, or if we're out camping, yes. But when we're in the city, a lot of our time is spent alone. So I guess we won't get tired of each other, right? <laughs> it's really not that much different than it was before, seriously. Except I got a ring on my finger and um, we made the commitment for the long haul. So I think that I was a little bit of an anxious style, but I think I'm moving into the secure. I feel very secure with my love and for his love. And yeah, it's not a bad thing that we're spending so much time apart but it is a reality it's a real it's not your typical traditional marriage okay so i'm going to talk more about different aspects of this it doesn't mean i'm an expert but what i like to do is i like to do research on subjects and so as i realize things in my life i want to share them with you okay two announcements i have totally given my website a whole new look it's a more it's more user friendly, it's more scaled down, it's more minimalist, and it's more easy to find. All the links have been changed. So all of the past videos with some of the links, they're gonna be, though they won't work. So, but minivanlee.com always works, or minivanlee, minivan-lee.com, or minivanlee.org, yeah. I mean, they're all, they all work, but, I have some new products coming that I want to offer you. And one of them is jewelry. And I want to, I don't have photography done on it yet to get it onto my, um, get it onto my website so you can buy it. But there'll be other products. I've got home decor and I've included not just the shemogs, but hats. And here's one of the pieces. It's kind of, I thought, well, that's kind of like different but it's blue and the lime green, the lime and green, boy, that is really um, the style now. So, what do you think? I love it. And it just, it's, 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 it's well made and it's just stretches over. Let me take my watch off, there we go, there. So, this is but one that I'm gonna offer so there you go and i love the colors these are nice summer colors yes now i do have another one you know everybody has a different style red and the turquoise let's put this in. easy it's well made now with the purple hmm, i don't know but there you go and i'll be putting that up today too i love this one there you go. Okay, so as I find these things, I'm going to put them up and I will let you know. I'm going to be starting a new art piece. And let's see what else. Here's another thing. I need you to put on a comment or find me on Facebook and leave me a message. I have a couple of my wigs that I'm going to sell. I'm going to offer them to you. Maybe my next video, I'll put one of them on. Um, I know that there's a size chart, so I do believe that, I mean, I am just a medium. I'm not small and I'm not large. If you have like a medium, <laughs> maybe I don't know, I maybe I could measure around this way for you and then you could measure. Because what I did with, the, with my wigs is I bought them from Cindy, my friend in Monterey in California. And she, they're expensive wigs. And she's probably spent about two, three hundred dollars for them. Well, she sold them to me for a little bit less than a hundred dollars. So, but I'm going to offer them to you for a good price. It's not going to be, you know, <laughs> I mean, it's going to be at least, you know, forty dollars because it's a good wig. And then I can send you the video that we did on the wigs, and Cindy shows how to wash it. And I'll give you more details on that because I'm kind of running over on my time here. But I've got a lot of things, I have a lot of announcements to make. 
So I'll get this up. I love accessories. I love jewelry. And everything is going to be um, free shipping, as always. Okay, everybody, I love you guys. So please subscribe and give me a thumbs up. It really does help me. And, of course, you need to go to minivanlee.com. I Please go and look at it and check out some of the links. I do have a daily video up. And in the top, the little thing that you, the, like the drop down um, uh, links, the drop down uh, yeah, links, um, I do have an inspirational in there too. So there's different things going on at my website. So I love you Mwah. until tomorrow. Bye. And Attachment, it's a good book. Bye.